Fly Girl Surfing and Sports is brought to you by the Surf Bus, the original North Shore Activities Tour. She wakes up and takes up a surfboard, heads out, out from the seashore, from the world in where she lives. She's got no fears of worries at all right there, just the smell of salt water that's in the air, and the sunrise. Aloha guys, I'm Paige Delander, your host for this show, and it's great to be here with you. We had a great talk with surf legend Keala Kennelly about her new board shorts, equality, big waves, and mental health. We'll also bring you the action from the Carissa Moore's fifth world title from California. It was a battle between her and Tatiana Weston Webb. We'll also have highlights of the Supergirl Pro. So. First up, let's check out DJ KK's new shorts. They are so comfortable. Here's 15 minutes with the superstar, Kayala Kennelly. I was always trying to get them to make board shorts for women that were actually made out of the really great materials that they used for the guy shorts, and they, they just wouldn't do it, you know, and they wouldn't, they wouldn't make them in cuts that were like anything other than like a, you know, tiny, tiny short shorts where, you know, you get thigh rash and stuff like that. So I used to just wear the guys, the men's board shorts, because they were just much better material, much stretchier, much more comfortable, but even those were like, you know, too long, they kind of catch on my knees, so I even towards like the end of my career started cutting them, I would take men's board shorts and just cut them to like, you know, mid thigh length, and then, you know, I'd post pictures of me surfing and stuff in them on my Instagram, and, and I'd have women reaching out to me like, oh my god, like, where did you get those board shorts at that length, like, where do I buy those, and I was like, oh, they're just men's ones that I cut, and then that kind of got me thinking like, God, I've been asking these surf brands for, you know, almost two decades now to just design board shorts for women, and the surf industry is just not doing it, so I decided um, to make my own, like, specialty board short brand just for women's board shorts. Um, I didn't bring all three colors, and I actually have some new, uh, some new colors coming in in the next order, but, um, we got black, yellow, and there's pink right now, and then I, I have a blue and like a, a really cool patterned one It's gonna be the next one. But as you can see, they're like the four-way stretch material. They come up to like right about mid-thigh. So it's really like the perfect length. And um, you know, I, I, I put in this like really groundbreaking thing called a pocket in the back with a, like a leash loop apparently this is like a big deal because they never designed pockets on women's board shorts geez yeah because a lot of the a lot of the you know major surf brands if they do make board shorts for women's they don't include a pocket it's like we don't know how to drive a car or we don't you know live in our own houses i mean how would i get to the beach if my boyfriend doesn't drive me i i don't have car keys <laughs> i really like uh the, the name and the logo um, I designed it myself. It actually has a lot of equality symbolism in the logo. So you have a um, greater than sign and a less than sign separated by an equal sign. So we're not greater than men, we're not less than men, we're equal. We deserve equal performance, surfing, water gear. It basically started over at Mavericks. Um, there was a big wave event at Mavericks uh, called the Titans of Mavericks, and they they would just wouldn't invite the women, and you know people like Bianca and, and uh, I think Savannah Shaughnessy and and some of the other Mavericks female surfers just kept asking for them to like invite women to this event, and they just kept denying the women. 
And so um, what ended up happening is we got a female on the California Coastal Commission who have, happened to be an activist, um, and they voted to they voted to include women in the event. They, they basically made it so that they, the contest promoters had to include women in the event. And then they went ahead and, um, you know, they, they got a, a female beach marshal. They got like a female, you know, t-shirt folder. But no athletes. No athletes. And, so, and then the next year, they invited some athletes, and then they said they were going to do two rounds of, to narrow it down who actually got into the contest. And by the time you know, they went through round one, round two of, of selections of who's going to get invited, of course, all the female athletes were gone. So there was a lot of empty gestures. Um, and then finally, the WSL ended up buying the permit um, from the Titans and Mavericks. And when they did that, we came to WSL and said, we, you know, we want you to include the women. And they said, yes, no problem. And, they said, and then we said, oh, we'd also want equal pay because we're going out and surfing the same conditions as the guys. You know, we're putting ourselves in, in, in the same kinds of dangers. Uh, so we want equal pay. So that's kind of how the equal pay thing started. For the last decade or more, they've completely excluded the women from any professional events uh, on the North Shore. Uh, they haven't been in the in the Triple Crown of Surfing for over 10 years. Uh, and so, you know, we had to go to the city and county, you know, Betty DiPolito and um, uh, Sabrina Brennan and, and Carol Phillips. We all went to the um, Hawaii City and County and asked our representatives because, you know, beaches are public property and so if you are excluding the women on public grounds, um, you know, that's gender-based uh, discrimination. So that's kind of the basis for how we're able to use the permitting system to basically require uh, anybody that pulls a permit for a contest on the North Shore be required to include a women's division in their competition. You know, it sucks that you actually, like, have to go that route where you f force people's hand. But if you don't, like, they literally will just keep excluding the women indefinitely, you know. It's like sometimes you just have to make people do the right thing. I think that um, WSL announced, like, for the next winter season, there's going to be a women's triple crown. And they're going to have Haleiwa, Sunset, and Pipeline, just like the guys. So, you know, literally went from over 10 years of being excluded from every single contest in the Triple Crown to finally, you know, getting the equal opportunity. And, you know, sometimes people can be very critical of the women, especially like having an event at Pipe, you know, they'll, they'll say like, oh, can the women actually like surf Pipe? And it's like, they're never given the opportunity, you know, apart from Betty's contest that, you know, gets run in April when it's, you know, the end of winter and you know there's not really any winter swells anymore like when do women get the opportunity to go out and surf pipe you know um, there's there's usually like 80 or 100 of the best guys out there during the winter and it's like impossible to get waves and you know they just have never been given that opportunity whereas like junior men's will have competitions at pipe where they can like start to go surf pipe with only a couple people in the water and like push their push their level and, and get comfortable the women just haven't had that so I think that you know, if they're finally giving the women that, I think the women will absolutely rise to the occasion. I mean, you saw in the, the Pipe Masters, Carissa was killing it, you know. Tyler, all, all the girls were, you know, they stepped it up. I thought they did a, an awesome job, and I think that that will just get better and better. surfing pipe when I was like a teenager you know I was flying over here from Kauai and and surfing in the triple crown of surfing <laughs> back in the day when they actually used to have women in the triple crown of surfing um, and yeah I would go I would go surf pipe and and um, I had the amazing opportunity of, of getting to film blue crush and go surf pipe and have guys like 
claw blocking for me and I actually got to like get some waves and that was amazing. So I've had some I've had some um some success at pipe. It's it gets harder and harder. You know, I feel like it gets more crowded and more aggressive every year. But um I still love it. I really uh liked the Red Bull magnitude format, you know, I thought it was I thought it was awesome, you know, because yeah, it's really hard when it's just like a one day event. You know, once they call it on, you kind of like, it's whatever you get, you know, on the day. Like, it could be good in the morning. It could be, I mean, perfect example, 2017 uh, Piahi Challenge. Like, you know, they sent the women out first here in the morning, and it was just like suicide. Uh, it was just so big and so choppy, and then they sent um, the men out right afterwards, and they just were getting absolutely mauled and then they ended up calling the event off because it was too dangerous and they were towing by the afternoon so you know things can change really quickly um, conditions can change really quickly so to have like a format where it was like you got to go out and charge big waves all winter long you know multiple different swells you know another cool thing about it too is you could just be having an off day you know um, you, you might, you know, be injured or have your period or just, you know, feeling sick, feeling off, whatever. And, you know, if you, if they call it, they call it up on that day and it's a one day event, like that's your only shot. Whereas this like gives you the entire winter to like really pick and choose like where you want to surf, when you want to surf, you know, um, yeah, I'm really feeling it today. I'm going to send it extra hard, you know, or, oh, I'm not really, not really feeling it today. Maybe I'm going to back off a little bit. You know, it gives you. It gives the opportunity for your to put your best performances forward, I think. For those of you out there that are just, you know, struggling, you know, um, with with depression or just, you know, having a really hard time, you know, just go talk to somebody like don't don't just keep it to yourself and just feel like you know mind over matter and you, you know you can just like power through it like just go talk to somebody get the help you need you know don't don't feel embarrassed or ashamed like we all struggle you know I think we need to speak up more and kind of get rid of the stigma around mental health you know um, and, and we should just reframe it, you know, it's, everybody should be working on their mental health, you know, it's, it's, to, it's like going to the gym, but for your, your, your mind and your emotions, like, there should be no shame around uh, wanting to do maintenance on that. A lot of people ask me about, about um, the discs, so I'm, this will be fun, I'm going to show you, I'm going to do like a kind of unboxing here, yeah, demo, uh, so yeah so the first time they sent me the product and i like pulled it out i was just like oh my god i was really intimidated it kind of looks like it, it kind of looks like you know like mr monopoly man and i was just like i mean my first thought was just like like that's not gonna fit there's no way but so people ask me like how do you how do you can you possibly you know like put that in there and so basically you squeeze it like this to make it like stick size. So then it's just like the size of a tampon now. And so you, you at an angle, push it up there. And then once it gets up there, it expands and then it just stays in place. And it's amazing because it's, it just, there's no smell, you know, it's super clean. Uh, it's so much better than a tampon, just like, I don't, I will never wear a tampon again. Cause once, once you use something like this, that just like feels so clean and comfortable, it's impossible to go back to, to using tampons, which just, I mean, I can, I can surf in this for hours upon hours. And you know, when you come in from surfing, like if you're, if you're, if you're wearing a tampon, like you guys know what I'm talking about, it gets completely waterlogged. So you come in and you just, it just, you can just feel it soggy inside of you and it's just the worst feeling in the world but like with this 
you don't feel that. And so I literally will come in from surfing, go eat lunch, you know, like I'll forget, I'll forget, it. I'll forget I have it in. Tampon, you never forget. It's, it'll always remind you. It feels awful, so uncomfortable. So this was a total game changer. Um, I suggest you guys give it a try. It takes a little getting used to. Um, I still kind of mess up sometimes and don't get it in right, um, but it comes with instructions and it's not, it's not that intimidating. I know it looks huge. Does it also help with not getting pregnant? I don't think it protects from pregnancy. <laughs> it, looks, it looks like a Magnum condom. <laughs> but yeah, no, I don't think, uh, I don't think it's a, um, a dual, dual use menstrual pregnancy uh, birth control. But it works good for surfing. But it works amazing for not just surfing, any water sports. Could not recommend more. I'm so glad that nobody ever started and, and finished a, a documentary because like so much stuff when I think of like when that when that was and to now it's just like so much stuff has happened like imagine if imagine if I had did, done a documentary like five or ten years ago like it would have missed so many amazing things you know so people tell me I should do a documentary but I'm, I'm not in a huge rush honestly I'm hoping the board shirt brand blows up. I really am. I mean, it's not so much about run like a, a huge corporation, you know, it's, for me, it's like, I'm not even starting like a clothing brand, you know, like I make tanks and I think I did some hoodies and stuff, but it's really about like specifically making board shorts for women, you know, um, because I just feel like they, they don't have they don't have any options you know you go on you go on any of like the 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 surf the major surf brands it's like thousands of pairs of of guys board shorts in every freaking color you can imagine and the women just have like one or two to choose from and they're usually you know made with subpar materials horrible cuts uh just the wrong lengths just not not anything that would be functional or high performance. So I just feel like there is a huge um, demand for something like that and nobody's filling it. So, you know, I wanted to make board shorts for women that's accessible to all women. I wanna do like much bigger sizes and stuff too. One thing I'm running into right now is just my supplier's not letting me order the range of sizes yet that I want. Um, but as the company grows, um, I'm hoping to get, you know, much bigger sizes for the curvy girls. Body yeah, inclusive. How about us old women? Whatever. Yeah, I want, you know, I want young girls in my board shorts. I want old women in my board shorts. I want skinny girls. I want big girls. Like, uh, you know, I want all women. I want to make my um, board shorts accessible to all women. So that's, that's the goal.